the cultural impact right. that it's going to need. And you brought up the political change mm -hmm. and, and representation there, and you talked about the corporate change and representation there as well. It kind of almost highlights what we're finding in this report, which is, yeah, we do see African Americans in the workforce, but where they are represented is at the bottom of the ladder mm -hmm. when they're there, mm -hmm. and they just so happen to reflect the lack of diversity that we see in the Pittsburgh region overall. Mm -hmm. If we're going to change it, is it going to take a couple of folks making major changes towards the top, or is this something that we're going to be able to say, okay, listen, imagine Pittsburgh showing all these jobs, all these other organizations are showing all these jobs, we're just going to have to attract people and then let it happen organically. It's going to be something that's going to be earth-shaking or more organic, do you think? I, so we have to do both. Um, we do need to attract more people to the region. Our population numbers are just too small, so we need more people. But uh, in order to get more people to come, you have to be a place that is perceived as a place of opportunity. So we have to address the underrepresentation of certain groups in the workforce, the um, under the um, the underemployment, if you will, of African Americans certainly, in that their wages are beneath and low and at the lowest, and in those industries that aren't the the growing, more vibrant industries. So it has to be a both and. Um, effort. So we have to focus on the elevation of people that are here, um, and we have to focus on the attraction of people that so, are here. So guys, how do we have so many workforce diversity programs in the Pittsburgh metropolitan area? This reminds me of the south side of Chicago. Everybody has a program and the numbers stay the same or get worse. How do we have all of these workforce diversity development programs in the city of Pittsburgh that are designed to take people that are, that are in this report and everybody gets money, everybody gets pats on the back, and people win awards for this, and then we still get reports like this? How does that happen, especially in 2015, in what we're calling the most livable city? Yeah, it's hard to paint with a broad brush, though. I mean, there are companies out there that are really on the cutting edge of this, and I think they are walking the walk, and they're doing the best they can, and uh, you know, and they represent a certain portion of, of the regional workforce, but there are hundreds and hundreds of companies, and not all of them have the resources, and not all of them are thinking about this issue, and I'm not sure most employers really understand what danger they're in a decade out if they can't solve this workforce problem. And unless they become aware of that, they're not going to engage in these efforts that you see around town. So yeah, you can have some very successful diversity programs in a few large organizations, and you're still not going to move the needle as a region. And I think, I, I think Bill's right, and I think we also, I think we need to think creatively. We're a city that's relatively small where the efforts of people and um, the kind of capital that we have can make new things happen. Um, and that's what I think we really need to bring to bear. I think we need to certainly continue on the efforts. We're working on getting the word out. Um, but we need to say, you know, if, if, if we've been doing this, this, and this, and it's only worked to this degree, what else do we need to do? But I, I feel like I need to speak for the unspoken on this one, and I, I apologize for being a little bit direct, but what I'm hearing some of this, and, and it, it just sounds like this, the typical cop-out stuff that a lot of people are frustrated with, and particularly as a native black Pittsburgher, this is the type of stuff that we've heard for decades. It's the same stuff that we heard when people were digging shovels into the ground earlier this week about the Lower Hill development, the same thing. Oh, it's not going to be the same as it used to be, but it always seems to be the same old song. So at some point in time, one, we have to be more aware of it, and number two, there has to be more effort than what we have. It seems as though many of our civic leaders, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like a lot of our civic and, and corporate leaders here in Pittsburgh are too busy patting themselves on the back when another poll comes out saying that we're such a great place to live and not paying attention to these things and making it their issue. Is that well, something me, that should uh, be addressed more? Let me also just say, because I want to challenge, there is really not a lot of diversity programs in the region. I've lived in a number of other places, worked with a lot of different companies and organizations, and there aren't as as many as I think we could have in the region. But is that because we, we define diversity different? Because if you look at an Atlanta, if you look at a Charlotte, the way they view diversity, it's almost a way of life. We're here, it's almost a project. And is that part of the reason why that's the case here? Uh, I think it has a lot to do with um, a lack of critical mass 
Do you know what I mean? It, it's, it's because the numbers are small, I realize we need to do something, but the pain associated with making the change that you have to make in order for change to happen, there isn't the same sort of push to make it happen that you have when you have a larger mass of people representing different diverse groups that are constantly you know, asking and pushing and everything. You have a bigger affinity groups and, and all that, and that's just not, you don't see that. So Bill, this report from the numbers that we're seeing is, is less of a call to action, but also considering the, the, the critical mass that's not here in Pittsburgh, it's more of a call to courage, don't you think? Mm -hmm. There's gonna have to be a certain segment of you know, captains of industry in the 21st century, if you will, that's gonna have to really grab this by the horns here in the city of Pittsburgh and say, we love this city enough to drag it into its future, whether they like it or not, versus saying, well, come on guys, let's everybody get on board, because it seems as though that method hasn't worked. Well, I mean, one of the great things about Vibrant Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh Today having taken this on is now we've got the snapshot, we've established the baseline, and we really didn't have that before. I mean, yeah, a lot of anecdotal information, a lot of eyes wide open, sort of observing, but really now we know what the numbers are in the region. And the good part about that is, as we try diversity initiatives, as we try to go out and recruit people, as we try to encourage employers to be more creative, we can now begin to measure our progress. And as a result, we can all be held accountable mm -hmm. as to whether or not we're being <laughs> successful. Yeah. And on real numbers right. and not just on perception. Now, there's power in having these kinds of metrics and these kinds of numbers mm -hmm. because it can put a lot of the civic leadership across the community a little more on the hot seat to really begin to deliver mm -hmm. results. Well, what I want to do is I want to take the diversity issue. And when we come back from break, I want to take it from black and white and start talking more about green and what it means when we don't have enough black and white working together in a diverse fashion in Pittsburgh. Don't go anywhere. Talking about that next on Night Talk. Get to the point.